G'day, that slot car guy here, and welcome back to another slot car review. And today's slot car, I've got to be very careful on how I pronounce the name. It is G Slot Slot Cars. That is correct, G Slot. So stick around, let's check out this, I believe, Japanese brand. Uh, we'll do a teardown, we'll check out the chassis, and we'll do a hot lap and try and post a faster time on my board. So let's get stuck into G Slot Slot Cars. Welcome back to another review, and as I said in the intro, this is a quite a unique company, uh, G Slot Slot Cars. Now, I haven't found much information online about them. I believe this was around 2007 to 2009 release from all the forums I've seen, but take a look at this beautiful looking NSX. Now, it does say it's a 132 scale slot car. It actually looks a little bit bigger, but we'll do a full tear down and have a look at what comes in this box. But let's just take a quick tour around the box art itself. So clear case with a nice sleeve. I actually don't mind the design on the sleeve itself, a lot of colors. Clear on both ends. Let's go around to the rear. It's a fair bit of writing going on there. It shows you a little bit of this chassis. It's a H-01 chassis. But as always, take a quick tour around and we'll jump in to a tear down and have a look what comes in this box when you purchase it brand new. Right here, let's get stuck into the unboxing. We'll take the outer sleeve off. We've already had a quick look at that. And let's have a look at the car whilst it's on its base quickly. And it is the Takata NSX for the Dome Racing Team. I'm a huge fan of the color green, so hence why I chose the green over the other color that's available. Uh, but look at this. This thing is packed to the rafters with decals, so we won't go through them all, but a couple of ones to note is the nice big motor um, Sticker on both side doors, the Carter, and then the Phillips with the blue line. Really like that. Try and get a bit closer so you guys can see. And then down on the uh, side of the body kit, you can see there's a heap more stickers, including Bridgestone. This thing is packed with um, stickering all over. I really, really like it branding. Now let's go around slow. Look at that rear spoiler. Holy moly. That is, <laughs> that's huge. I love it. Uh, nice wide body kit, very much like the DTM cars in Europe, but this is obviously the Japanese version. Part of the JGTC, if I said it correctly, which I used to watch as a young fella, and this is part of the Super GT500. Jump on YouTube and Google that, because I'll tell you what, some of these cars were quite impressive back in the day. Nice big air, air scoop on the back windscreen. You've got the driver, he's on my side of the, of the road, which is great. So America and I think the UK and some of the Europeans will be like, why is he in the passenger seat? Let's spin around to the front again. It's not the non-pop-up light version. Obviously NSX came out in multiple different versions. And let's go back around to the rear and you've got a nice tow hook here. But look at that, incredible. So let's jump into the teardown. Oh, actually before we do that, sorry, let's flip it upside down. Now there's a little bit of a specialty with this car. Let's take away the Japanese instructions. I believe that's in Japanese. I'll have a look off camera, but I believe that's that's no good to me. But as you'll see here, there's a set of tires uh, times four. Now that's a smaller diameter set of tires, which I think they prefer you use that for racing. The ones that are on it now, let me flip it upside down. They are a larger diameter tire and a thicker wall, which I think they're classed as the display tire. But what I'll do is I'll do a hot lap with both sets and let's see what's quicker. But I thought I'll quickly show that before I do the teardown, another set of tires to race with. All right, let's get stuck into the teardown. Alrighty, so let's get stuck into this teardown. And I won't lie, it took me a little bit of figuring out to, to go which screw do I need to take out to remove the shell and the chassis because there's a lot of stuff going on underneath this car. But before we talk about that, I'll remove the car from its base. Now to get the car from the base, is this nice oversized screw pin. Um, I did have to use a screwdriver, a flathead to get it off. It was in there nice and tight, uh, but that's what holds the car in. Before we look at the car, this is one of the most unique bases I've ever seen. That is a proper bit of um, slot car rail that's embedded into this stand. That is, um, wow, I've never seen anything like that before. So if you really wanted to be cheeky, you can run a bit of uh, sandpaper and actually run some powder of that and, and make yourself a nice little tire truer base. I wouldn't do that, but that's what you could do. Very unique, and trust me, it gets weirder from here. Now, in my unboxing video um, from yesterday, I did say this was very much like an RC car. Yes, it is. I've checked it out already. It is very much like an RC car. So, it took me 
the right screws, four screws to remove the shell and the chassis. And like I said, it took me a little bit of uh, playing around. So let's remove that. Well, no, let's not do that. Let's have a look underneath first. And this is where the magic happens. Look at that. This is, again, I'm an XRC racer and this straight away looks like an RC sh uh, chassis to me. There's a lot of adjustments there. Now, the body kit itself is actually screwed on. I didn't go as far as taking it off, but I actually had to look twice to see if that was holding anything in. There was a lot of, I wasn't too sure what to take off, to be honest. And the instructions are in Japanese, so I couldn't read what goes well. Probably could look at the pictures, but <laughs> I figured it out. Now, let's take the shell and chassis apart quickly, and let's have a quick look inside the shell itself. And there you go, you can see the body kit is left behind with two screws. Uh, everything is screwed in. You've got the cockpit screwed in. It's screws, screws, screws. But it's not that heavy. I don't have scales, but it doesn't feel that heavy. But that is a very big shell. So I'm guessing it is bigger than 132. I haven't measured it, but that's quite a wide and um, long shell. Anyways, very beautiful. Let's move that aside. Let's talk about the business. Now, just to keep in mind, I'll quickly tell you if you're going to buy one. This, these two front screws and these two rear screws are the screws I needed to remove to get this chassis and shell apart. So there's gonna be a bit of glare because it's black plastic. Now, these screws here, if you unwind them, you can adjust the ins and outs of this chassis. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll quickly do it on camera, if it'll allow me. So I'll just pop them up ever so slightly. And you can change the wheel, well, the length of this slot car, look at that. So then your base moves back and forward. Now, you can play with this for hours and try and get the right setup. I'll leave it back in. These screws merely press down just to hold the actual shell two-piece together, the chassis two-piece together, and you just put them down so they're finger tight, and now that won't move. Very, very unique, and again, very RC-ish. Um, we've got Sidewinder. Obviously, you've got the guide at the front as per usual, but you've got a hell of a lot of adjustment in this center, which I'm not touching at all. I don't want to make this thing unbalanced. Uh, bar magnet across the center, which is, is removable, sorry, across the front of the motor, and that is about it. But very, very RC, wow. Um, I've never seen anything like this before. Let's have a look at the guide quickly. The actual guide section itself is quite unique. It's got um, some, the copper actually, plates actually sit up top high, that's where it's pressed down, and then they flap under. So it's quite a unique guide setup as well. And its own little swivel too. All right, let's look around the front. Negative and positive as per usual. Um, the guide is forward of the front wheels. Um, for some that might be different, but it is definitely forward of the front wheels. And here, here's where the RC part kicks in, the whole motor compartment. So a, a Sidewinder looks like a Scarlet-ish motor. I don't know the specs on it. I've tried to look it up. I don't know. There's nothing printed on it that can tell me. Some more adjustments here in the center. Let's look around the rear. It is rear wheel drive driven from the left hand side and they look like nylon or plastic. I'm not too sure. But again, if you're into RC cars, this looks like an RC chassis. Wow. Or a mini Z. Really cool. So there you go. There's the what are we? There's the G-slot NSX. So what I'll do is, and the easiest thing to take off was the tyres. I mean, look, look, look at that, that is peel off, and I will put on the smaller tyres. So I'm gonna put the, they call them the display tyres on. We'll do a hot lap with the display tyres on, times five, and see what best time I can get. Then I'll change over to the, the smaller diameter tyres, and let's see if that makes a difference. Let's get stuck into the hot laps.
So how did the NSX by G-Slot perform between the two separate sets of tyres? Now let me set the scene. The car itself is set up the same for both sets of tyres. I've screwed the chassis hard up against the shell as far as it could go so there's no flex or play. There's been no taping or cleaning of the tyres. There's been no gluing of the tyres to the rim. And there's been no truing or sanding of the tyres. So it's a complete stock setup for both sets. Now, for the display tyres, I went out and done five clean hot laps and the quickest I got was an 11.56. Now, that, I think that was pretty good. Um, was it to its limits? Look, to the limits is when you start coming off the track. I pushed as hard as I could knowing that I had five more laps to go and I was actually happy of how that performed. I've come back, chucked the racing tyres on and back onto the track for another five laps. And again, five clean laps and I got at 11.25. It is a small increase, but over time and setup, you would get much more out of this car. It felt completely different. It was real twitchy through the corners. On the straights, it felt faster. Did I push it to its limits? No, because it would definitely come off. I got to the part where you'll see in the laps, I'm actually starting to lose traction. Really fun to drive, completely different car. Now, of course, I've updated the SRC Chrono Complex board to suit. G-Slot's NSX 1125 on racing tyres. So it's officially the quickest car I've had around my track, officially. But do I recommend G-Slot? Of course I do. Uh, this chassis has that much play in it. You can do so many different setups. The beauty of this car is a lot of racers try and separate the chassis from the shell so there's no rolling effect where they both roll together. This is already ready to go. You loosen those screws up and these will roll independently. The chassis and the shell are separate straight away with this car. I think that is genius by G-Slot, and if you spent some hours on this car, you would definitely wipe my time straight away. So, really, really good car for races, and I think you'll get hours of fun just setting it up. Scale Seller, I've got to say a big thank you, mate. He recommended this brand to me for a YouTube review. I recommend him to anyone who want to buy slot cars who's in Australia. I believe he does overseas. Hit him up on uh, Facebook and find out, but mate, Awesome car to review. Thank you very much. As always, at that slot car guy, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if there's any cars that you want me to run around this track and do a review on, please hit the comments because I've got hundreds of cars to run. If there's a car I should buy and do, let me know. But as always, thank you guys. Take care. Ciao.